Welcome to a new video about controller design. This is our example number four. In this example, I will look at the PID controller design using the frequency response method. So we will discuss this example step by step and work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following feedback system given. You see the PID controller as the block here and also plant in a cascade. The plant transfer function is shown here. It is a third order system. It has also a zero at minus four. And we must design a PID controller for this system such that the PID control system has a zero position error for a unit step input, also having a maximum overshoot of 15%. So we need to stay below this value of the overshoot. So let's see how we can discuss and design this problem. So we have the PID controller that has three parts. It has a proportional, the integral and also the relative part. That's also why it's called PID. And these three blocks are shown here. It is on gain K1, K2 and also the K3. Everything is given here in the Laplace domain. Together here, the summation of these three blocks will make this PID controller, which is now called here specifically GPID, which is then this controller. In Casca with a plant, we have exact same diagram here. This PID controller is set here that can be then taken together, these three. So summation K1 plus K2 over S plus K3 times S. And you can also write it down in this format such that you have the controller gain times the two zero locations divided by the pole of the origin. This is the generic expression for the PID controller. So we need to determine the KC. ZPI and a ZPD. So there are two zeros and also one parameter KC. So let's look at the solutions. We start with the calculation of our damping ratio from the specifications. We know that the MP, this is the overshoot, is 0.15 or 15%. So that's actually this formula again, assuming a nice second order system, of course. This is then the 0.517 approximately for this calculation. Now using this zeta, the damping ratio, we can calculate now for this frequency response method, the required phase margin, at least what we need. So this formula is again what we have discussed. And this formula will then produce using this value of the 0.1, 0 0.517 is 53 degrees. Now when we now start first step is the P control system. We consider that our controller is just a gain, which is only this one. So we exclude now the integral and the derivative part. We have now the following loop transfer function. I call this L1. It's K1 times the plant, which is then this transfer function. When you now look at this, you can calculate first the gain margin frequency of this P control system. That will be then determined by looking at required phase margin and also some correction. Why is this correction required? Because we know that we also proceed in the PI controller and also PD controller part such that this everything is PID controller. And by that adding the PI and a PD, we will see that there is some phase shifting, which is also need to be compensated. That is the correction we require. That's also what we have discussed in the separate videos in the PI and the PD controller design. So the argument of that loop transfer function must be equal to minus 180 degrees plus this phase margin what we require but also some correction to get exactly to that or at least to that 53 degrees so we add a correction that correction is between 5 or 10 degrees or maybe a little bit lower or a little bit larger depending on the accuracy of your design so in this case i will add 10 degrees as the correction parameter here and now we can substitute or express the argument as arctangent of the omega over L, which is this transfer function here in the J omega domain. So we have then J omega over four or omega over four in this format. And then minus the arctangent of this part, minus arctangent of that part, and also minus arctangent of this part. So it is all here, equal to one, minus 108 degrees, plus the phase margin, plus the correction. That will be then end up to minus 117 degrees. Now, when you solve this equation, you can get now, you're just using your uh, calculator, you will have now this parameter or the value of your omega, which is 2.37. Uh, and this is also the phase margin frequency for this specific situation. This is only for the peak control system. And we will use this 
parameter or the value for the future calculations. Now let's take it here and then move on and see what we can get. We also need to calculate the P controller gain because that's the only unknown at the moment, K1. So we set up the absolute value of this loop transfer function given again in the J omega domain to 1 but using also this 2.37 radians per second as the frequency where we require minimum of 30, 53 degrees for the phase margin. Now when you now do the calculation you see again this uh, expression here now as the magnitude so you get k1 times the magnitude and divided by the three magnitudes here multiplied and you equate that to one and you solve this using of course this 2.37 everywhere we see the omega p1 omega pm1 you calculate this and you will get 11.07 as the gain now this will get this gain will produce at least a phase margin of 53 degrees. Let's continue. Now, we continue now over the second step, which is the PI control system. That is this, you can see the K1 again, which is our P controlled part, and now the zero, and also the pole of the PI controller. Together, we will now move towards the PI control. Now, we have already calculated the K1, so we need to only calculate the Z PI. So, the selection of the PI controller zero is, uh, rule of thumb in this frequency response method we select it as one decade lower than the phase margin frequency we have just calculated which is then 2.37 over 10 so the zpi is then 2.37 over 10 which is one decade lower that will be then 0 0.237 and then when you have that you can calculate or set up your transfer function for the pi controller because we already know the k1 and this transfer function is now complete then we have the loop transfer function for the PI control system as shown here. You see the complete expression. Next step is now the PID control system. Now we already have the PI. Now the final step is the derivative part, which will then add another zero. So this is the transfer function we know. This is given here. So we can say also here, we see the two zeros. We only have the ZPI. We also need the ZPD. And the KC here is actually our K1. Now, select the PD controller zero such that the overshoot stay below the maximum value. That is mandatory. So we need to make that happen. Now for that you can select your zero location. You can take it for example very close to the vertical axis which is on the uh, complex plane. You can take it very far away. It depends on where you of course place your zero. I just take arbitrarily a zero at equal to five. So we have then at S is minus five or zero. This is just a random choice, actually also based on our experience, but uh, this is really a random choice. If this is not doing the job, you will of course can again simulate your uh, system for another value and then check the performance. That is also possible. Now we said already that the KC must be K1, which is then 11.07. So we have now the KC, we have now ZPI, we have now selected the ZPD. And then the PID controller will be then given by this expression. You see the ZPI and the ZPD. And now the design is actually completed. Now we can say also that the loop transfer function L3 now here is the GPID uh, times plant, and that's the complete expression. Now we need to verify this because we have done some work and we'd really like to simulate the results and check the work we have done. Now this is first for the P control system, just the gain, 11.0.07. This is the loop transfer with the P controller. This is the plan. We just want to check that this is indeed what we have calculated. This is the loop transfer function expression and this is now the label for the phase margin and the phase margin frequency. The phase margin frequency is indeed exactly as we have calculated, but the phase margin is much larger than we have actually calculated, which is 72.1 degrees. We had actually 53 required minimum. We also added some 10 degrees of correction. So still way above what we have calculated. So this is indeed at least 53 required. So this is also good. So moving on to the unit step response of the P control system, you can see that the value of this, which is the closed loop transfer function using Mason's gain rule, will produce this overshoot, which is 12.2%, which is smaller than 15 degrees, and it has a 
uh, rise time of 0.5 approximately and also peak time of 1.1 seconds and a settling time of approximately 1.7 seconds. But the final value is not one because we apply a unit step input, you don't get the unit out. So you must get a one here in order to have zero steady state error. So there is steady state error. So the overdue is fine, but the steady state error is definitely not what we wanted. So that's the also reason why a P controller is not sufficient here because there is no pole at the origin for this plant. So we need to move on and then add the controller in more dynamics so that means we also need to add the pole at the origin so we can now compare now the second step which was the pi controller so the loop transfer for the p and the pi controller the blue one is the p controller and the orange one here is for the pi controller again the same plan so l1 is the loop transfer function of the p control system and l2 here as shown here is the pi control system it's interesting to see here the label for the phase margins again. This is the phase margin frequency for the P control system. You see again the 70.2, uh, 72.1 degrees and also the phase margin frequency exactly as we have calculated before. But the phase margin now has decreased because of that PI controller action. You see it is now 66.3 degrees. So it has decreased approximately by six degrees. So that's also the reason for this correction when we uh, work actually towards the design of a specific minimum phase margin and that has happened now at the phase margin frequency of 2.38 so a little bit larger than the actual calculate so there's a really small change here but the phase has decreased indeed here by six degrees approximately so that is the reason again for adding some correction okay now moving on to the unit step response of the this PI controller, just the PI control system, closed loop system, you see the T2. It has no overshoot, that is perfect. It has some rise time, which is 0.682 seconds, so larger than the P control system. So in again, this is the closed loop transfer function, T2. And these are the results. You see the overshoot is 0%, so definitely much smaller than the 15%, so that is perfect. And rise time is as said before this. There is no peak time because there is no peaking also no overshoot but the setting time is 11 seconds so that is very very slow compared to 1.73 seconds for the p control system so we can of course speed this up there was not a requirement of course in the design but we can make this much much smaller that is why we need the d controller part we also see that the final value is one that means there's zero steady state error it is also perfect so as we want so we have two things already, so actually in this case the PI control does the job. If you just consider the steady state error and also the overshoot, but still we want to speed it up, so we would like to add the PID controller here. So the derivative part is now added as said, and you can now see all the plots now for the loop one, two, and three. So the L1, the blue one is for the P control system, L2 is for the PI control system and L3 is for the PID control system. And this was our transfer function with the PID controller in this case. Now, you can see the shape in the magnitude and also the faces. You see the blue for the P control system here and the green for the PID. The green and the red one are almost the same actually for uh, up to, let's say, this frequency here. 0.8 or, or 0.7 radians per second, but then it deviates and then adds the positive phase because of that lead act, the, the derivative action. And what you also see is that the phase margin frequency has shifted to 11.1 radians per second, and also the phase margin itself is almost 89 degrees. So it is much, much larger than before. So this effect will definitely also be seen in our Unit, unit step response. So this is indeed a good choice as the zero location of five as we have chosen. So because that is the five for the D action. So let's, let's see now the unit step response and also verify that that is indeed uh, what we really wanted. So the PI control system, the T3 again, this is the close to transfer function here and the result are no overshoot, perfect. The rise time is 0.189 seconds, much, much smaller also for the, than the P control system, also than the PI control system. Now the setting time is almost 2.9 seconds, so again, much lower than 11 seconds, but it's larger still than the P control system, but still 
a nice, uh, let's say, decrease in the settling time. And also the final value is one, so that is also perfect. So we have now two things we wanted and also decrease the settling time substantially compared to the PI controlled system. So we can say this system with a PI controller selection zero at plus uh, minus five for the D action is quite okay and also does the job. You can of course adjust that value and also adjust other values for your PID controller to get maybe this smaller, maybe also gives away some overshoot because you can get up to 15% so there is some headroom. That is just uh, some, uh, uh, some tuning uh, step you can do after this step. All right, this is our example number four about the PID controller design using the frequency response method. We have discussed step-by-step -step the uh, calculations and also in steps what you can do to design this PID controller. We have designed first the P controller, then added the PI part and also the derivative part as the final and combined that together to a PID controller. And then verified in MATLAB that it is indeed according to the specifications in this example. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.